the beloved actress who gave away the entire plot of her movie on national television, the actor from a massive film franchise spoiling their character's death, and which actor got fired for his mistake? Keep watching to be shocked about these spoilers. David Prowse played Darth Vader in the original Star Wars trilogy, or at least he was the guy in the Vader costume and helmet. James Earl Jones provided the voice, and Sebastian Shaw played the unmasked villain at the end of Return of the Jedi. Prowse's image wasn't as well known as those of co-stars like Mark Hamill or Harrison Ford, but the first wave of Star Wars mania in 1978 was so huge that a Prowse meet and greet in Berkeley, California drew 1,000 people. The British actor delighted the audience at the event, with stories about his career and the first Star Wars movie, including news that a sequel was in pre-production. Prowse promised that Star Wars 2 would feature a lightsaber battle between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. And then he said that Darth Vader would reveal to Luke that he was his father. Star Wars 2 became The Empire Strikes Back, of course, and it featured the exact same twist Prowse had spoiled years before. That's impossible! Prowse wasn't the only cast member from The Empire Strikes Back to spoil the movie. Billy D. Williams, who played the irresistibly roguish Lando Calrissian, spilled another Star Wars secret, but on a much higher profile venue, NBC's long-running morning show today. To be fair, Williams had to reveal that Lando wasn't really a bad guy, just a crafty manipulator. He seemed to get a little defensive when the interviewer labeled his character as evil and decided to interject. He's not evil. He's just a guy caught in the situation. In the grand scheme of Star Wars spoilers, it's a pretty minor reveal, but on the other hand, it did ruin a pretty significant plot twist for anyone who watched the interview before the movie. Like most time travel movies, The Time Traveler's Wife has a complicated premise. That makes for a fine line, then, between explaining a movie's plot and spoiling the movie entirely. The Time Traveler's Wife star, Rachel McAdams, accidentally crossed that line while promoting the film on The Daily Show. Host Jon Stewart asked how far outside the present the story's time-traveling husband was able to journey, and McAdams explained, He goes as far as his own childhood. He goes forward as far as his own death. After a moment of silence in which McAdams realized what she'd done, Stewart replied, Whoa! He knows how he's gonna die before he dies? McAdams, a little embarrassed, sighed. Now we've ruined everything. It's probably worth mentioning that the movie was based on the 2003 bestseller of the same name, and fans of the book most definitely were already aware of the title character's fate. Still, promoting a film romance by spoiling a death is usually not the best way to go. Sylvester Stallone produced and earned a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his role in Creed, a Rocky franchise spinoff that helped revive the blockbuster series he created in the 70s. In 2014, he tweeted out an artsy, sentimental photo of the filmmaking process behind the film with the caption, Where the Screenwriting is Done. The picture showed a pair of glasses, some handwritten notes, and the last page of the script for Creed. The page was upside down, but if his fans wanted to know how the movie ended, all they had to do was flip the photo and zoom in a little. Game of Thrones fans were thrilled when it was announced that Ian McShane from Deadwood would join the cast of HBO's epic fantasy series in its sixth season. In an interview on BBC Breakfast about his role as Brother Ray, however, he gave a little too much away. McShane said, I bring back a much-loved character everybody think is dead. Vanity Fair connected the dots and determined that McShane meant the Hound, as actor Rory McCann had been spotted on set. Informed he'd upset some people with his casual plot spoiling, McShane offered Game of Thrones fans a verbal eye roll. He told The Telegraph, You say the slightest thing, and the internet goes ape. I was accused of giving the plot away, but I just think, get a f***ing life. Logan marked the end of Hugh Jackman's 17-year journey playing Wolverine across eight X-Men films. And while the X-Men franchise will continue with the heroes played by younger actors, Wolverine doesn't really age, so there was essentially only one way that the character and Jackman's portrayal of him could end, with Wolverine's death. Still, it wasn't cool when Jackman on the week Logan hit theaters told Entertainment Weekly that's how it ended. He revealed, in the end, he must give his life to save someone else. I thought that was really powerful. He wasn't wrong, although it might have been even more powerful if he'd managed to keep it to himself. Millions of people were excited for Rogue One, the first in a planned series of standalone Star Wars spin-off movies. Among the most pumped, the people who took time out of their lives to attend Star Wars Celebration Europe, where actor Jang Wen blew the Rogue One ending for everyone watching the conference. Wen portrayed Bayes Malbus, one of the members of the ragtag group who comes together to steal the plans for the Death Star to stop the Empire. Faze heroically dies in his mission, which Wen mentioned during a live-streamed Star Wars Celebration panel. 
He would have revealed more details had panel host Gwendolyn Christie not cut him off, warning, I think you've got to leave it there. By the time Avengers Infinity War hit theaters in 2018, Mark Ruffalo had played the famously green-skinned muscle man The Hulk in five Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. But somehow, he wound up leaking significant details of two of those highly anticipated films before they were released for the public. Infinity War is the first in a two-film Avengers finale, and features a brutal and sad twist, ending in which intergalactic villain Thanos snaps half of all life out of existence, including many of the Avengers. It's unbelievable, and it's even more unbelievable that Ruffalo told the world such events would happen during an appearance on Good Morning America nearly a year before Infinity War would arrive at Cineplexes. Ruffalo teased, Wait till you see this next one. Everybody dies. Dude, 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 dude. Dude. Not everybody. No. Not long after the Good Morning America incident, Ruffalo attended the premiere of the 2017 MCU entry Thor Ragnarok, in which he co-stars as the Hulk. At the premiere, he accidentally shared the movie with anyone watching his Instagram live feed. By forgetting to switch off Insta before putting his phone in his pocket, Ruffalo accidentally streamed the first 20 minutes of the movie's audio over the internet. Tom Holland is a versatile actor and international celebrity who does two things more than anything else in his busy career. He plays Spider-Man whenever the MCU requires him to do so, and he routinely spoils sensitive or top-secret details about those same MCU films. In June 2018, Holland put in an appearance at Ace Seattle Comic Con and posted a video to his Instagram page to calm down fans eager for details about his upcoming second Spider-Man film. Tom said these words before ironically and accidentally revealing the movie's name. I wanted to apologize because there's no real revelations coming out this weekend about Spider-Man 2. I got the new script. I'm super excited to read it. It's gonna be great. The funniest part is that Holland said all this while holding up the iPad upon which he was reading the script, with the not yet public title Spider-Man Far From Home very visible. Here's a spoiler alert for Avengers Infinity War. Spider-Man dies in the end. A crowd filled a theater at the Arc Light in Los Angeles for a special early screening of that film hosted by directors Joe and Anthony Russo, along with some of the cast members. Holland came out on stage and quipped, I'm alive! Though obviously confused about whether he was walking out before or after the screening, Holland coyly but clearly revealed his character's fate. That was a test, right? There's uh, nobody back there? Yes, you passed. Plenty of superhero movies are also origin stories that lay the groundwork for future sequels by showing how a regular individual acquires their superpowers and embraces their extraordinary lot in life. Aquaman, the 2018 mega blockbuster entry in DC Comics' cinematic universe, features Jason Momoa as the title Lord of the Seas, reprising the role he plays in 2017's team-up movie Justice League. At the time, filmgoers might not all have anticipated Aquaman to be an origin story that takes place before the events of Justice League, but they soon found out as much thanks to an excitable Momoa sharing a little too much about the movie, particularly its ending and his character's arc during his promotional rounds for Justice League. As he told SFX Magazine, He's not even really Aquaman yet. He's not the king of the seven seas. We don't really get there until my solo movie at the end. Really, it's a huge growth for me. It's a gigantic arc for Arthur Curry. Guardians of the Galaxy was something of a surprise hit in 2014, because it's based on more obscure source material than previously successful MCU outings like Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. Only relatively hardcore comics fans knew what to expect from Guardians. Hardly anybody could predict how events would unfold in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, which hit theaters in 2017. The sequel adds mysterious new characters to the mix, including Aisha, played by Australian actor Elizabeth Debicki. While discussing and promoting the movie at San Diego Comic-Con in the summer of 2016, which was a year before the film would see release, Debicki laid out most of Aisha's arc. Unfortunately, she also included one of the film's twists. She isn't one of the good guys. In fact, Aisha is a villain who tricks the protagonists into fighting on her behalf. As she told Gizmodo at San Diego Comic-Con, Aisha is this leader of the sovereign people. She enlists the Guardians to help her fight a sort of galactic beast. It's all going swimmingly until it all turns very, very sour. Let's just say it goes from amiable to not so amiable quite quickly. Actor Rodri Martin works primarily in Spanish language media. In 2021, he landed a very plum gig, performing the dub for actor Evan Peters in the Spanish version of the Disney Plus MCU series WandaVision. Peters' appearance on the show as Pietro Maximoff, who was presumed dead, is a mega surprise in the complicated, slow-boil world of WandaVision. 
According to Cineception, Martin revealed his casting on Twitter ahead of Pietro's big Episode 5 reveal which violated Martin's confidentiality agreement with Disney and Marvel. Martin also told Twitter that he'd been dubbing Peter's lines in future MCU projects, which means ironically at that point, Martin either didn't really know how WandaVision ends or was trying to throw fans off the track of figuring out the real deal with Pietro. The source states that for potentially spoiling multiple projects and ignoring contract language, Disney terminated Martin and replaced him with Manuel Gimeno, the actor who performed the dubs for Charlie Cox in Marvel's Daredevil series. While the Star Wars prequels weren't as well received as the original trilogy, there are some undeniably great elements of the films, such as the always terrific Samuel L. Jackson as a Jedi named Mace Windu. Prior to the release of the final prequel, Revenge of the Sith, Jackson sat for an interview with Now Playing. When asked what Windu would be doing in the film, Jackson answered, dying. He then added that he couldn't go into too much detail, but that his character would face an awesome death. Of course, hardcore Star Wars fans were already aware that the Jedi faced near total extinction during the events leading up to the original trilogy, so Windu's death wasn't totally a surprise. Still, having it confirmed this way counts as something of a disturbance in the Force. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite talkative actors are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.